and welcome to the ESC Software Tutorials. My name is Jean and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of inventory. This series of videos is designed as a complete course, but feel free to jump to specific topics. Before you get started, we'll need to cover setting up the foundation of your inventory tracking system. Next, we'll move to the basic inventory tracking from purchase to sale and follow up with some advanced capabilities. Finally, we'll round it all up with reporting. So buckle in and let's get started. Welcome to our tutorial on inventory setup. You may be just starting out with inventory tracking in ESC, or you may want to revise your current procedures. Either way, you've come to the right place. We'll begin our journey in the System Setup screen, found in the Company menu. Now look for a tab labeled Inventory. Here is where you will select the default settings for your inventory management system. The first option you will see is the Inventory Accounting type, which controls how your inventory items are costed when you use them on an invoice. You can select from first in, first out, average cost, or last purchase price. First in, first out determines the cost of an item based on the order in which it was purchased. Average cost will average out the price you paid for quantity you have in stock. And finally, last purchase price will cost an item out using the last price you paid for the item, regardless of when it was purchased or how many you have in stock. The default price book field allows you to choose the default price book for all new inventory items. ESC will allow you to create as many price books as you need, it just needs to know where to put the new parts. You also have the ability to select all or none as a default. We'll cover price books more in a later lesson. Next, you'll select the preferred vendor that you want assigned to all of your new items. This will automatically fill in the vendor that you've chosen on the Vendor tab of the Inventory Entry screen when a new part is created. This makes it easy for you to place an order for this item and to assign alternate part numbers. We'll cover more about this process in our advanced tutorials. The next option is Default Markup Code. The markup code allows you to create a formula that ESC uses to update the prices of your inventory items. This can save you a lot of time and effort when you need to update your prices. The markup code is usually based on average cost of the item, but you can also set a base price for it and can recalculate the prices of an item as the costs fluctuate. Here, you will select which markup code is used on new items. ESC allows you to set up multiple warehouses so that you can track where your parts are. A warehouse may be a van or a truck that carries inventory, or it may be an actual building you use for stock. Your default warehouse is the one ESC chooses for receiving or selling parts. You can also create barcode labels for all of your inventory items through ESC. The Amount on Barcodes feature gives you the ability to add an amount, whether it be a cost or a price, to these barcode labels. One important factor in tracking inventory quantities is whether or not ESC will allow your quantities to fall into the negatives. For instance, if you were to add an item to an invoice that has not yet been received into ESC, the quantity in stock for that item will display as a negative. You can prevent this from happening by setting the Allow Negative Quantities feature to No. Or you can have it prompt you when you are about to go into the negatives. Or if you're not worried about it and you know that receiving the items later will balance out your stock, you can simply set it to Yes. Finally, at the bottom, you have options to extend your prices out to five digits after the decimal and to cost items automatically when they are received directly to a job. Once you have your defaults selected, click OK to save your settings. Now we'll head over to the Inventory menu. The bottom half of this menu is dedicated to various settings and controls you'll need for managing your inventory. The first thing we'll need to set up is a part category and subcategory by clicking in Enter Part Categories. These are used for organizing your inventory items to make printing reports and searching for items much easier. Now click on the Add New button on your toolbar. First, we'll enter a name for the category itself and enter at least one subcategory. Each subcategory has the ability to control which markup code and price book its items are assigned to, but these options are not mandatory. Once you've entered your options, click Save and then exit the Categories screen. Next, we'll select Enter Warehouses from the Inventory menu. Here, you'll want to enter a warehouse for every location that is responsible for holding inventory items. This can be company vehicles or actual storage locations. Don't be afraid to name the warehouse after a driver or person responsible, because you can go back and edit it later if needed. 
Once you have all of your warehouses created, simply click the X on Enter Warehouses box to exit. This concludes the basics of setting up your inventory tracking system. Be sure to check out our other tutorial videos on inventory to learn more about creating parts, generating reports, and tracking stock.